Ladies and gentlemen, the first snapshot for the Nether update, Minecraft Java Edition 1.16 has been released. Here is 20W06A. My name is Slice Lime. I'm here to guide you through all the changes in this snapshot and settle in because this is a big one. This is for the Nether update and so let's start with changes to the Nether biomes. There are three entirely new biomes in the Nether. The first of them is the Crimson Forest, a red forest-like place with huge crimson fungi trees, if you will, with shroom lights in them, a new lighting block that light up the surroundings. There's a new block covering the floor that looks kind of like mycelium, it's called Nylium, and this version is the Crimson Nylium. There's all kinds of strange new vegetation on the floor here too, we'll get to that later. There are new types of vines, they are called weeping vines, they grow from the cave ceiling and from the fungi downwards. There are also crimson spores swirling through the air and the fog is kind of a dark red in this area. In the crimson forest you can also find the hoglins spawning. There's another type of forest as well, it's called the warped forest. Warped forests are strange blue places. They're the least hostile place in the nether. The only hostile entity that will spawn inside of the warped forest is the Enderman, and it does seem like they spawn in a little bit too large quantities at the moment. Hey, it's the first snapshot, it'll happen. The warped forest has Nylium as well, it's the warped Nylium, the blue version, and the forest floor is also covered with all kinds of new strange vegetation. There are huge warped fungi here that make up the trees, and these also have shroom lights. The fog in the warp forest is a dark blue and there are warped spore particles swirling through the air here. The third new biome is the Soul Sand Valley. This is a more open space made mostly out of soul sand and a new block called the Soul Soil. There are basalt pillars that span from the floor all the way to the ceiling of this huge cavern and there are fossil remains of unknown creatures. The particles here are ash particles falling through the air and there are a light blue glow. Among the nether mobs in the Soul Sand Valley, you'll also find skeletons spawning. In addition to this, the old nether biome has been renamed that is now called the Nether Wastes. Note that this is the first snapshot and that means that many things are not entirely done, including the abrupt shift in fog color when moving from biome to biome. Let's move on to a completely new material in this version. It is called Netherite. Netherite is a new high level material found in the nether only. You can use that to upgrade diamond gear into netherite gear through a fairly complex process. This starts with mining a new type of ore called ancient debris. You can find that in the lower depth of the nether around levels 11 to 18. One thing to note about ancient debris is that it can only be found in covered form. You will never see ancient debris exposed to air, you always have to dig it out. Once you have ancient debris, you can refine that into netherite scrap by smelting it in a furnace or a blast furnace. And a blast furnace really is recommended because this smelt is a lot slower than a normal smelt. Once you have four of those, you can take those four netherite scraps and combine them with four gold ingots in a crafting table and that gives you one single netherite ingot. Once you have the netherite ingot, you can use that and craft it together with a diamond tool, weapon or armor piece to upgrade that piece to a netherite one. Do note that currently this resets the item, makes you lose all of your enchantments. Netherite has a bunch of special properties. Netherite items, for instance, will float in lava and they don't burn. So if you do die in lava, then your netherite items at least will survive. Netherite items also have a higher enchantment value than diamond, not as high as gold, but they will get better enchants in an enchanting table than diamond items. Netherite tools also work faster and last longer than diamonds. Netherite weapons do more damage than diamond. Netherite armor gives you higher toughness and have higher durability than diamond. And finally, netherite armor as a special property gives you knockback resistance. As with other ingots, you can also craft 9 of these netherite ingots into a very expensive netherite block. Let's talk about block and item changes in this version. There are two new wood-like materials. They are the crimson stems and the warp stems from the huge fungi that you saw in the forest biomes before. These new materials work like wood in almost all aspects. There are a few things missing, like there is no bark only block, the ones that are called wood for the other log types, and there are also no boats. 
Other than that, you can craft planks, you can strip them, you can craft buttons and doors and trapdoors and fences and fence gates and all the other things that you can make out of regular wood. Another new block is the basalt block. You can find those in the pillar ships in the soul sand valleys, but once you've mined them, you can also place them sideways should you wish to. The new surface blocks from the ground are called Crimson Nilium and Warped Nilium, and you can pick those up with a pickaxe. If you use bone meal on netherrack next to Nilium, then you can spread Nilium onto that block. Their new vegetation, they are called Nether Sprouts, Crimson Roots and Warped Roots. There are two new types of fungi, they are called, you guessed it, Crimson and Warped Fungi. If you use those with the bone meal on top of Nihilium, then you can grow them. They are also plantable on grass and podzole and many other blocks, but there's currently a bug causing bone meal to only work when they are placed on top of Nihilium. There's a new type of nether wart block, it's the warped wart block, it is a blue version of the nether wart block, and it only exists in full block form, not in wart only form. We talked about the vines, the weeping vines that grow from the bottom of a block and downwards. They work just like kelp does, except downwards and not in water. The new light source is called the Shroom Light. You can find this naturally and there's no way to craft it. It is a new light source at maximum light level. We talked about soul soil blocks. They're a smoother texture version of soul sand without the soul sand specific effects. A special thing with soul soil is that whenever fire burns on the soul soil, it will burn with a blue flame. And that flame will last forever, just like fire does on netherrack, for instance. If you pick up soul soil, you can use that to craft a soul torch by adding that to the torch recipe. That is a torch with a blue flame and blue particles. And those, in turn, can be crafted into soul lanterns by just replacing the torch in the lantern recipe with a soul torch. One change to blocks not related to the nether is that the walls stacked vertically no longer have gaps in between the blocks. Let's talk about changes to mobs. Hoglins have been added, well kinda, to this version. Their models have been added and they don't do much yet, they walk around a little bit like pigs but hey at least they have cute flappy ears. Actual behaviors for the hoglings will be added in future snapshots. A whole bunch of bug fixes and changes have been done to mobs as well. Patrols will no longer spawn when the player is close to any village. Previously this would only apply if you're in the village, but now it applies also if you are close to the village. Shulkers could teleport to non-solid faces, and they wouldn't teleport to some solid faces. Those bugs have been fixed in this version. If a villager got infected by a zombie turned into a zombified villager, then it could despawn even if you had already traded with that villager. Bunch fixes have been done to cats. Cats didn't stand up when you right clicked them while they were sitting on chests or beds that's fixed in this version, and tamed cats would remain sitting forever if the world was reloaded while the cat was sitting on a chest or a bed. Cats also didn't bring you a morning gift if they decided by their own will to sit on your bed or on a chest. That is fixed in this version. And to round off the mob section, a couple of fixes to foxes. Foxes didn't run away from polar bears, that's fixed in this version. And foxes went to sleep on honey blocks even in broad daylight, that is also fixed. A non-nether related world generation fix. Shipwrecks and ocean ruins were a bit too common. They are now a bit less common, so you'll have to search a bit longer to find them. Other gameplay fixes. Knockback resistance has been changed, it is now a scale instead of a probability. That means a higher knockback resistance now reduces more of the knockback, rather than having a higher chance of reducing all of the knockback. The change has been done to mending. A mending item used to pick up experience regardless of if it had any durability to mend or not. If it didn't have any durability to mend, the XP would go on your XP bar regardless of if you had other items in need of repair. That has been changed, so XP is now always assigned to mending items if they have durability left to repair. You can remove curses from items by repairing them together in the inventory, crafting two items together. That has been fixed in this version. If you clicked on a bed when there are monsters nearby, then your spawn point wouldn't be set. That has been fixed in this version as well. And if you clicked both mouse buttons at the same time while looking at an item in an item frame, then you could delete that item. If a baby pig was hit by lightning, then it would turn into an adult zombie pigman. That is fixed in this version. Some bugs with riding. If you were riding on a horse and threw an egg or snowball or XP bottle, then it would instantly break. And if you were riding with a carrot on a stick and used it up, then it couldn't be broken. That has been fixed in this version. 
A bunch of things could break turtle eggs that included item entities, minecarts and even experience orbs. Those things can no longer crush turtle eggs. The recipe for crafting a cartography table will now correctly unlock when you get paper, not when you get string. And breaking a shulker box in creative mode will drop it in the center of the block rather than at the corner now. Some redstone changes. Pistons will no longer pop off the block attached to their backside when they are retracting. And speaking of pistons, pickaxes are now the tools used to break pistons. If you don't have a pickaxe, then pistons will break slower than they broke before. If you do have a pickaxe, they will break faster. If you pushed or pulled a sloped powered detector rail with a piston, then it would break. That is fixed in this version. If you had a comparator detecting an item frame through a block that also had a redstone output, that didn't work. The output used by the comparator will now be the maximum of the two signals. And when you used a hopper to feed a composter, then the composter didn't show the composting particles. That is fixed in this version. There are a whole boatload of sound fixes and new sounds in this version. Gas sound ranges have been reduced so you won't hear as many and as loud gas sounds in the nether anymore. Small slimes now have a proper squish and jump sound. And there are added sounds for breaking or stepping on blocks for a whole range of both old and new blocks. Those include bone blocks. Netherrack. Soul sand. Soul soil. Netherwort. Nether bricks. Quartz ore. Basalt. Shroom lights. Nylium. Fungi. Stems. Sprouts. Roots. Ancient debris. And netherite blocks. There are also new sounds for equipping netherite armor. There are a bunch of visual fixes in this version as well. There was a bug with entity shadows floating slightly above ground and still rendering even though you were watching through a transparent block that has been fixed in this version. If you had a keep, then it would detach slightly from your body while you were crouching. Glass held in your hand would render differently depending on if you had the cloud setting on or off that's fixed in this version. And the bottom face of column blocks are no longer rotated 180 degrees depending on the direction of the block. Redstone wire now has a bottom texture so you can see it even if you place it on top of a transparent block. And the bottom of the flower pot is now correctly rendered. The falling dust particles of anvils and concrete powders were all black that's fixed in this version. Rain particles would appear one block below the water or lava surface that's also fixed. And a bunch of entities would turn black. That included TNT arrows on tridents turning black when they fell on soul sand or snow layers. And silverfish and endemites would appear black on soul sand. In addition to this, a problem has been fixed with transparent item models being inconsistent in the rendering when there is a glowing entity present and a number of fixes to hands bobbing or not bobbing when they should or shouldn't, including throwing potions or projectiles causing both hands to bob up and down and a number of missing hand swings. User interface fixes in this version. Shift clicking stacked items with a data tag like a name into an enchanting table will no longer remove the data tag from the item that gets shifted in. Stone cutter recipe lists now show item tooltips and the composter has now been moved into the decoration category of the creative user interface, just like the other workstation blocks. In addition to this, a number of text fixes for different strings. Let's round off with the technical changes in this version. A new command has been added, it is called locate biome. You run that with the ID of a biome to find the nearest instance of that biome. 
As with the locate command, you can then click the link that gets posted in the chat to teleport to that location. Furnace recipe NBT has changed. This is probably not relevant to most of you, but if you have something relying on the data format of the unlocked recipes in Furnace NBT, then you might want to double check the data format. There are new particle types in this version, four of them, Ash, Crimson Spore, Soul Fire Flame and Warped Spore, all of those with underscores between the words. There's a new entity type that is the Hoglin, doesn't do much yet. Of course there are new block and item types for all of the things that we mentioned before here, and there are also new block and item tags. The new block tags are Fire for regular fire and Soul Fire, Crimson Stems, Nylium, Warped Stems, Warped Blocks, and new item tags Crimson Stems and Warped Stems. There are also a couple of bug fixes for technical issues, one of them being that if you killed a slime or magma cubes that had the no AI tag set, then the no AI tag would disappear on the smaller spawned magma cubes or slimes. And the final bug fix is that if you used set block with air and destroy on a block containing a liquid, then the liquid would not disappear. That is fixed in this snapshot. And those were all of the changes in the first ever Nether Update Snapshot 20W06A. I suggest you go test this out, but do remember that snapshots are less well tested than full releases, can corrupt your world, crash your game and other nasty things like that. So if you test it, do so on a backup of your world or on a separate test world. Also, if you want to be absolutely certain, create your launcher profile in a separate directory. If you want to try it but you don't know how to, then click on the link on the video right now that'll take you to a tutorial about how to get and play a Minecraft snapshot. And that was all I had for you for this time. I hope you found this update video useful and if you did, please help me out in return, leave a like and share it with your friends. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest Minecraft news, then please subscribe to this channel where I do update videos for every new release, pre-release or snapshot of Minecraft. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when new videos are out. My name is Slice Slime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.